Hi all, welcome to a brief demonstration of a software set that allows the communication of a Linux box with uh, remote devices over the Profnet standard. Here the Linux box works as Profnet controller and is able to transfer process data with remote devices using the Profnet real-time communication. So, I have mounted the pen pot in its case, uh, so we have now a keyboard and additionally I have connected a USB app, this small here, with a mouse and the uh, USB Ethernet adapter. So we have now a, a wired connection with the ET200S and as you can see here it's, it's reporting a bus failure. That means we can start now with um, its configuration. And exactly at this point starts the work of the software set I have mentioned before. This software set includes a configuration application that with the help of a network description file, an XML file, um, can boot up all the field devices with the corresponding application relations. Um, but before running this application, I have to load a kernel driver that provides the Profinet sockets required for the boot up sequence. And this, this is going to be the first command I'm going to execute on the pen pod. So let's zoom. Okay, loaded. And now I can start this configuration application with a network description file for this hardware scenario that we have here. And with a pen pot as host device. Okay, okay. Now in few seconds you will see that the, the bus failure it's, uh, will be gone. It takes a little bit. But now, bus failure is gone, that means uh, the uh, communication is up, but there is no user application running yet. As you can see, when I press the mechanical switch, the output lines remain off. That means um, we have now to start uh, an external application. And for this purpose, I have created and a, a graphical user interface with Python and Qt4 as graphical library. And I will start now this on the PenPod 2. And there is. It's a very simple application. As you can see, uh, it shows uh, some objects for the input and output lines. Um, and this will uh, display the state of the of the corresponding lines on the on the ET two hundred S. So, but now let's see what happens when I press the mechanical switch now. As you can see, the output lines have toggled on both sides simultaneously. I'll do it again. Important is that they really do it simultaneously at the same moment. And additionally, I can control these lines with the mouse too. Okay, uh, I will switch now the LED on, the red LED. Okay, on, off, on, off. I can control the other lines too. And now when I toggle, press the mechanical switch, you see they have toggled again. Very, very simple um, IO control. And as you have seen, there is a delay of one second between the control of each of each line. Let's say we would like to change this behavior and we would like to have a spin box so that we can change this value dynamically. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to, to make this, this change. So we go to the engineering station, this one here, and I have, we see here the graphics designer, and now here in the graphics designer I will uh, add the spin box that I have created before. This spin box 
has now a default value of one second, one thousand milliseconds, and a minimum of hundred. So this is okay. I save it, and the name of this object is Spinbox too. So I save it, and now I have to change this on the Python um, code too. And now, as you can see now, there is a hard-coded value of 1000 milliseconds. But now we would like to read this from the spin box. Okay, that's all. Now I only have to save the project, save, and now I only need to transfer this to the paint pot. For this purpose, I have another uh, application that downloads the new code over the uh, wireless connection to the paint pot. And now when I press it here, you will see that the graphical interface has been restarted automatically. And you can see now there is our spin, new spin box. Okay. So now let's make the same test. I will press on the mechanical switch. At this moment, we have still one second, thousand milliseconds. Okay, but now let's do it faster. Let's say 200 milliseconds. Okay, 200 milliseconds. And now it should be faster. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Yes, right. Important is that the output lines are changing uh, sequentially. You can see this here, they really change sequentially and I can still control the output lines with the, with the mouse and then you can see they change correctly too. So this was the first application, quite simple. And now I'm going to show uh, another more interesting application. Okay. I have connected the USB webcam to the pink pot. This one here. Uh, this is an old one, eight years old as far as I remember. But well, it works uh, out of the box under Linux, meaning it's, it was not required to install any additional driver. So the goal is when I press on the mechanical switch, uh, the webcam makes a snapshot of a shape and the pink pot detects the number of corners of this shape. Uh, the piece of code used for the corner detection is based on the Open Computer Vision Library, just including some minor adaptations for this demonstration. And after the corner detection, the pen pod will set an output line of the ET200S, depending on the number of detected corners. I have here um, four different shapes. Okay. I think um, I will make the first test with this one, with the square. So it's on the place. Now when I press on the mechanical switch, we expect that the square is correctly detected. So let's, I will try, I will zoom slowly. You can see there is a dialogue with a snapshot and the corners are marked with uh, red circles. You can see they have be, they, uh, the application has detected correctly the, the corners and you can see the output line square was set correctly too. Um, you can see below of the, on the button of the dialog, you can see the number of corners and the duration time of the calculation of the detection in milliseconds. Now I will try it again, but this time uh, Let's see the output line of the ET200S2, this one here. So I will do it again. So the output line was reset. And after the detection, it was set again due to the number of detected corners. And the, um, the duration time is more or less almost the same, 1.7 seconds. So I will now test with another with another shape. Let's use this one here, Pentagon. OK, 
Okay, now let's see what happens. So, five corners detected and pentagon outline correctly set. It's working, it's working nice. Let's do it now with another one. Let's take this one here, triangle. Hope it works correctly too. So nice, it's working correctly with all these shapes. I will try to zoom back so you can see that the shape was correctly correctly set. And uh, now with the last one, with this one here. It's a little tricky. Now I draw it again. So six corners currently detected and the output line was currently set to. With this uh, last application, I wanted to demonstrate the main power of having a Linux system. Um, and this is mainly uh, its capability to extend with some special periphery for capturing data, then processing this data and forwarding some um, result to the Profinet network. And as Linux runs on an incredible number of platforms and embedded systems, uh, the software set of this demonstration can run on all these platforms too. So in my next video I will show how to control analog lines and how to create a simple human machine interface with uh, Python and Qt4. And I hope that at this time the, the touch controller is working correctly, so we don't need a mouse and a keyboard. Okay, thanks for viewing.